a simple definition of why we're all here, at least from a blockchain standpoint. And it really talks about a new unique app, but in all reality, it's just an app, but from a decentralized standpoint. What I believe is a very important point to make is the on-premise versus off-premise nature of how this works. So how over time you've seen an evolution of how things have actually shifted down and the importance of that and how it relates to what we're gonna discuss. So that on-premise and off-premise and everything basically getting uh, more intelligent as we talked about earlier at the edge, but while majority of the ecosystems for the last 10 years have been moving to the cloud, Azure, Google, Amazon, you name it, we believe that actually building intelligence on premise is actually very, very important and needed. Um, we'll talk specifically about how that works, but as far as some of the details around what we're talking about, these are illustrations of good use cases. So within each one of these ecosystems, there'll be use cases that are specific for adoption of blockchain. There's many, many more, which I'll talk a little bit more about, but we specifically think that inventory, which you see IBM doing a lot of, right? Um, exchanges, title closing, healthcare, banking. Banking or finance is really what we're all talking about when we talk about Bitcoin or Ethereum or these 1,500 different elements of forms of tokens or coins or currency. But in all reality, like, like was talking or spoke earlier, um, banking or finance is just a good use case. The way that technology will actually be disseminated, for instance, in healthcare, is very disruptive. How you can take patient data, but kind of um, maybe a summation of symptoms to recommended results to outcomes, and use that as big data for the masses. And we as mankind can actually improve by organizing data in a decentralized basis, whether on-premise, off-premise, online, or offline. So these are some of the sectors. There's many, many more. And there's many more details associated with them. But staying focused is very important for us. And we'll talk about how what we call the ClearOS marketplace focuses on that on-premise, decentralized, and specifics around the need for a platform for the future. Um, like was talked about for the last 10 years, we've kind of seen maturing ecosystems grow. But I would also say there's massive immaturity in the infrastructure as well whether it's this has been hacked or that's been compromised or these have been taken. We don't like seeing that, especially when it talks about blockchain and um, the future of infrastructure. We wanna make sure that it is very responsibly deployed, whether it's the technology itself or even elements that are on it. In the, in the cases that everybody cares about now or at least looks at, which I agree, it's not, the, it's not really um, materially important, but what we look at as far as cryptocurrencies it's, it needs to be responsibly deployed from a standpoint of how the underlying infrastructure and platform is actually working. Um, particularly working with HPE and the Silicon Root of Trust from kind of the hardware layer. So imagine you've got the hardware and the operating system and how they actually fit together. So for those of you that are not aware of, Silicon Root of Trust is a unique HPE security at the actual chipset layer through the boot process on how virtualization works, operating systems work, then you have a marketplace, then you have the apps. All of those basically combining together to give you an environment that is new, disruptive, and unique. Technically, you've already seen elements of it in your own lives with these PDAs. These access devices use a similar thing where you take the hardware, then you've got an operating environment, then you've got a marketplace, then you've got apps. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but that's a good example of what we're doing with enterprise grade HPE servers. So across the board, all HPE servers, Gen 9 and Gen 10, are all certified with ClearOS. Not only that, ClearOS comes pre-installed with these new servers, even ones that don't have hard drives. You can get a little USB key directly from HPE, specifically with ClearOS installed, and there's unique SKUs that are actually built for these types of bundles and offerings that we'll talk about. Um, when we look at nodes today, nodes are actually the infrastructure that runs what we call blockchain. A use case of blockchain is like Bitcoin or Ethereum. Today, 10 to 12,000 different nodes around the world actually run that network, right? Clear Center, from the day of its inception, we've deployed over 450,000 nodes worldwide in over 150 countries and over 86 languages. Literally, we've already got a massive platform that's already out there. So if you imagine taking one of these new dApps or these applications, putting them into the marketplace, you automatically have dissemination 
that's much bigger than the 10 to 12,000 that's currently out there today. I hope a light just went on there because it's a very important point to make. It's also important to know and understand that the actual layers that these nodes are built on, phones, laptops, PD, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. The access device layer of what's running these nodes, very illogical. It should be consolidated at the server, networking, gateway layer, all into one system. ClearOS, the operating system that we're talking about, actually combines that server, networking, gateway layer into one system that continually connects to the internet. When we all go back to our office, what's the most stable environment in your office? Is it your laptop? Is it your phone? Is it your friend's phone? No, it's the actual connection that everybody connects to, otherwise you're gonna go home and work from home. When you go home, you got that internet connection and then you have the same thing. So basically combining the server network and gateway, whether it's at, that, at your home, at your business, et cetera, is where we believe these nodes should actually rest. It's also very important to note that these nodes should not just be nodes like what's done in this environment where majority of these are actually mining to create blocks which has no value to mankind. It's just a proof of work. But we believe that working with HPE and combining the storage capabilities that HPE has, you actually provide the missing link that the world doesn't have, which is actual capacity, storage. So if you take a simple device, like the new microserver that was just launched from Hewlett Packard Enterprise, you've literally got up to 50 terabytes of storage for $350. There's nothing in the world, in my opinion, that can compare to that, especially when you talk about the networking capabilities, firewall routing, intrusion detection, content filtering. It's very, very disruptive. When we talk about ClearNode, ClearNode is specifically a combination of different elements, hardware, software, and services that, were, that are specifically productized and sold through channel partners to be able to get to those end users around the world or have end users, whether they're corporations that have distributed environments, basically bring them in. But they're unique in such a way that they're fully managed. So literally, fully managed. So hardware, software, services wrapped. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about relationships and services. But again, I, talked to, I touched based on how we've already seen this as humans. We've seen different hardware devices that we used to use all get consolidated into one intelligent hardware device that runs an operating system that then has a marketplace or an app store that then uses whatever line of business app you want. Whether it's a flashlight, whether it's checking the weather, whether it's getting a ride, whether it's getting a how, you name it, there's new unique apps that actually get deployed on these things that we're used to. That's not specifically what we're talking about. What we're talking about is the server networking gateway world that's going through this evolution that's already happened, okay? So by taking hardware, software, and services, and uniquely combining them in such a way that effectively provides uh, stability and structure and a single price, also deployment and maintenance, as well as a value model where they can actually in some ways pay for themselves, there's a disruptive adoption that will occur and already has started. So when we talk about the actual um, element of securing, remember we talked about silicon root of trust at the server layer, to the chip layer for virtualization, to the operating system, and it can be other different operating systems, and then to the app store. So the combination of really combining this environment and hardening it so it's very, very secure is very important and very needed. I don't know if you're familiar with some of the vulnerabilities that are happening out there, but you're seeing at the server layer, at the silicon layer, at the actual operating environment that's below virtualization, lots of vulnerabilities, especially since uh, June of last year, you've seen massive, in this industry, a ton of different security threats that this directly solves from a hardening standpoint. And that's built into these environments. It's actually built into HPE server, Gen 10s with the silicon root of trust, all of the systems except for the microserver at the low end. So it's, it's a baseline that we're building on top of. So for those of you that have saw the, the silicon root of trust announcement last June, June 5th last year, this is actually building on top of that an additional security layer. When you look at the core of consolidating, and this is the heart of the value that ClearOS brings, you're actually taking all these different manufacturers or vendors, and in effect, the outcomes that they do. So Cisco, um, SonicWall, you, you name these different companies, and it literally puts HPE not just in the server world, but also in the networking and gateway world with one device. So you take a server and you put some more NICs in it, and you automatically get HPE to compete at the server network and gateway layer, not just the server layer. 
So you've got an operating system that does all the benefits and features that these manufacturers do with one simple interface that can actually manage it and continue to grow as these different applications mature and need to be deployed. But the key is you have to have one simple interface or one simple platform that can actually be done on. And that's, that's what we're really announcing today with what we call ClearNode. This is actually probably one of the most important elements of ClearNode. It could not be without this type of a service. And it effectively takes, so ClearGM is a gateway management service that effectively takes all of the billions of websites and ports and URLs, both inbound and outbound, and blocks them all, 100%, and then allows machine learning for users. If a user wants to go from location A to location B, they can basically make the request. If, if no one has approved that before, it does it in real time with machine learning. Think about content filtering at the next generation. You will find some of the biggest manufacturers in the security world leveraging this same technology on their own infrastructure, but we bundle it and wrap it in such a way that is very disruptive. It makes the browsing experience for the user much faster. It makes it much more secure. All these ransomware and other viruses and vulnerabilities, because of the egress and ingress technology built into this, they're stopped. They just don't work anymore. You're, you'll see many countries that actually filter their environments or their countries in a very new, unique way, which also give their citizens a voice of where they want to go, what they want to do, because you don't, they don't want oppression, they don't want constraints, and the, the ability to do this on a simple node in a home or a country is very, very valuable. The technology behind this is very, very disruptive. When we talk about ClearOS itself, the actual marketplace behind it. So this is ClearOS. Instead of using a, a, win or a DOS or looking environment, kind of like command line. So for instance, ClearOS is actually built specifically off of Red Hat and CentOS. So if you're familiar with those environments, you can still do command line feature functions behind it, but it actually gives you a nice web interface where you can manage the server networking gateway layer and then pull in different applications based upon what the user or the IT environment actually wants to see and do. Um, when we talk about who is this focused on, it's focused for homes for businesses and the distributed enterprise with developers in mind, building applications and services on top of this ecosystem. This is the specifics of what we're talking about. So literally, we launched these three product lines, the HPE Microserver, the HPE ML110, and the HPE350, okay, the ML350. These powerhouse of servers, in my opinion, are the most advanced and disruptive servers in the world today. We're grateful for the opportunity to partner up specifically with HPE to launch ClearNode as well as the, the ClearOS line worldwide with them to be able to focus on a solution for the home. So if you want to go home and you actually want, remember, I don't know if you got this, but what I was specifically talking about is shifting the current proof of work to proof of stake built upon storage or space and space and time. And so in other words, how many in this room actually understand mining or blockchain? From a scale, of, you give yourself an eight or a nine, right? So you really understand it. So we're talking about shifting the way that instead of using proof of work with an algorithm that is actually wasteful, it use, uses energy and just wastes a ton, we're talking about deploying space, storage. We're talking about putting storage, 50 terabytes in homes, and then being able to actually distribute we talked about going from 10% to 44%. How's that gonna be done? It's gonna be done by deploying systems in homes that can actually not just process, but also store. And store from a fragmented, or what, what we would call a sharded standpoint, where all the data can be on these systems from other environments. Let's say here in Germany, a dental office wanted to deploy a line of business app for their environment but then they also wanted to standardize it on other dental offices, and then they didn't want to back up to Amazon or some other cloud, they wanted to back up to their own environments. This would do it, all in Germany, all with the same type of archetype from a, a regulation standpoint. This is an enterprise approach to how the infrastructure and platform can actually be deployed. So they'll actually have different features and functions. This went live last night. So from a pricing standpoint, from a productization standpoint, from an archetype standpoint, this is the news that we're here to talk about. For us, this is very big, very important. We've spent years with HPE, literally years, helping to design the requirements behind these systems. 
The NIC cards, how many, how do they work? How's the bus work? How's this flow? How does it get certified? Every piece of it, drivers, APU, GPUs, how does it all work and how do you do it in such a way that it's very, very competitive? How can a company like HPE compete with companies like QNAP or others in that same area at scale, at disruption, at the same time sucking in not just the server component, which they've been solid at, but the network and gateway component all combined into one? That is unique, that is disruptive, just like this was. Which, by the way, who carries Android versus iPhone? Android, raise your hand. Do you guys know where that actually came from? It, it's a very similar use case where you had a small little company that took it to Orange here in this area, and Orange Telecom said, hey, we see a future for this, but we couldn't figure out how to productize. They matured it in certain ways, got elements to work. Next thing you know, Google touched it, and it actually took off. Well, HPE is that Google in this experience. Literally 17 years has gone in to be able to build this type of an experience from in 2000 actually coming from the managed service provider sector all the way to 2009 getting involved in, in Bitcoin specifically. So it's not like this is new to us. We've seen this problem for a very long time and we've been building while everybody's been going to the cloud, we've been going on premise and building a solid platform with an enterprise focus and security in mind. One of the biggest things that's important to know is we don't, we don't build our infrastructure and security off of the normal VPN and networking game. It's done. Everything that we do is all web interface based and API driven. So we know that the security principles are not going to be violated when we're talking about how this is actually going to get deployed. Very, very disruptive, very, very unique. Um, when you talk about clear center, um, we actually have an element, Clear Foundation has a community of members of over 103,000 worldwide. Um, we have a unique small team in nine different offices um, and specifically just focused on building businesses. This is kind of the history of companies that we helped to build, literally 230 plus years of combined leadership team. Average team members, similar to HPE, where most of us have worked together on average 13 years each. So it's a very seasoned team with specific focus in different areas. This is actually when we were launching on June 5th of last year, this microserver with HPE, AMD. So literally, AMD, HPE, Clear Center come to build hardware, software services as a unique product. And today, basically wrapping that with specific services that are actually going to be a managed type service on ClearNode.